أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من حمسه ونفخه ونفثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We welcome ourselves back to the 13th episode in the series of our Ramadan Reminders So today marks the 13th day of Ramadan and uh, consequently marking the 13th, the 13th episode in the series of our Ramadan Reminders So we started yesterday with uh, Kitab al Muwatta ibn Malik So the book of Fiqh and Hadith of uh, Imam Malik Okay, so this book specifically is not, uh, uh, it is not specifically uh, to any mother have, it is a general hadith book. So that is uh, used as a reference book for all scholars. So uh, we started with the, uh, yesterday we discussed about the basic formation of Salatu Taraweh. Uh, the the historical background, what made it to be, uh, how was it formed in Jama'a, and uh, how was it allowed uh, to be in congregation, and whether it it has to be in the masjid or so we explained that. So today we are moving to Kitab Sayyam, so that is uh, book number eighteen. So book number 18. So yesterday, the, the, the topic we treated yesterday was book number six. Book number six. Okay, so that was, uh, so that was Kitab As-Salat Fi Ramadan. Okay, Kitabu Salat Fi Ramadan. So Salat Fi Ramadan, that is uh, the Salat Tarawih Fi Ramadan. So we are entering book number 18, so under volume 1, so Kitab Usiyam. Babu maja afiru iyatul hilali li sawmi wal fitri fi Ramadan. So this uh, number 1, lesson number 1 or part 1 of this book of fasting, Kitab Usiyam, the book of fasting. So this verb is a uh, it has many parts, many chapters, so to say. Okay, if we can say that, so chapter one is concentrated on the sight of the moon before starting Ramadan and for having, uh, for ending Ramadan. Okay, so the 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 the, the sight of moon. Adith and the tradition of the prophet related to the sight of moon or the moon sighting before starting Ramadan and before ending Ramadan. Okay, so we're going to read Hadith number one. Hadathani Yahya an Malikin an Nafi'in an Abdullahi ibn Umar an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dhakar Ramadan. فقال لا تسوموا حتى تروا الهلال ولا تفتروا حتى تروه فإن غم عليكم فقدروا له. Okay, so this is hadith number one. So the hadith is uh, reported in Bukhari, okay, in Kitab al uh, page uh, 11. Okay, and under Babu Ma Kola Nabi, Babu Kola Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Idaro Aitumul Hilala Fasumu. It's also reported in Muslim, okay, book number 13, Kitabu Suya, 
Okay, Babu Ujubu Somu Ramadan Diruhiyat al Hilal, Hadith number three. So these are the uh, in the uh, other references in which this hadith could be found. Okay, so the translation or the interpretation of the hadith goes thus: Yahya reports from Malik. Malik reports from Nafi'i. Nafi'i reports from Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned Ramadan. Okay, at the mention of Ramadan in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet said, La tasumu hatta tarawul hilala. You shall not fast until you sight the moon, until you see the moon, until you hear that the moon has been sighted, necessitating the fasting of Ramadan. Okay, so we have explained this, the sighting. Sumu li ru'yatihi wafturu li ru'yatihi So the interpretation of ru'ya here Sighting, seeing, witnessing Okay, as, uh, as interpreted in the ayah of Qur'an فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهَرَ فَلْيَسُمُهُ Okay, the Prophet in interpreting that فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهَرَ He says لا تسوموا حتى تروا الهلال يعني سوموا لرؤية الهلال ولا تفتروا حتى تروه أوكي يعني وافتروا لرؤيته. so by this the رؤية here is interpreting شهادة الشهادة in the in the آية of the Quran. so here what we, we the same interpretation that we give to Shahida is what we are give, going to give to Ruya here. So any one of you who is opportune to be alive to uh, to witness the month of Ramadan, the beginning of Ramadan, Fal Yasumu, should start fasting Ramadan from the inception. La tasumu hatta tarawul hilala. Do not fast until you have, uh, you are aware of the sight of the moon. Okay, so this is uh, a warning to those who would want to fast two or three days before Ramadan comes, thereby falling into Yawmushak. So this is also a nahyu for them. La tasumu hatta tarawul hilala. Thou shalt not start the fasting of Ramadan until thou sight the moon. Walla tuftiru hatta tarawhu, and thou shalt not break or stop fasting until thou hast sighted the moon. Fa in gumma alaykum fakdiru lahu. So if you are confused, gumma from alagamama. Alagamama here, that is, if there is confusion, meaning if the weather is not clear, if there is uh, weather, if there's non clarity of weather, okay, astrologically, so on the 29th day of Shaban, so the weather was not clear enough for people to see the moon, to sight the moon. And astrologically, it, has, it is also not uh, uh, stable. So the, what we have to do here is fakdiru lahu. Fakdiru lahu, the meaning in another hadith is fatimu shabana thalathina. Okay, then you have to wait until shaban completes 30 days. Okay, so when shaban completes 30, 30 days, so we have removed the doubting, the shaku there. Then the next day after the completion of 30th of, 30th of shaban, we fall automatically into first of Ramadan. So that is the meaning of فَإِنْغُمَّ alaykum فَكْدِرُوا lahu. If you are in confusion, astrologically, uh, uh, atmospherically, 
So then you 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 complete the word the counting of Shaban to thirteen. In similar interpretation, so when the when Ramadan is twenty nine, and people start looking for the the new moon for the breaking of the fasting for ending Ramadan. Okay, so if people cite it in the night of twenty ninth, so be it. So then the night of the next day uh, would fall in the first of Shawwal automatically. For in Wumma alaykum. Okay, but if it is if there is confusion in order not to fall into breaking fasting why it is actually in Ramadan. Fakdiru lahu, fakdiru lahu yanim, fatimu Ramadan thalathina yawman. So you complete the calculation of this of Ramadan to be 30 days. And the next day automatically will fall into Shawwal, regardless of whether the moon is sighted by anyone or it is not sighted. The calculation is what is uh, is completed. So that is the interpretation that we have in there. We read the hadith again. The Prophet Sallallahu says, لا تسوم حتى تروا الحلال ولا تفتروا حتى تروه وإن غم عليكم فاقدروا له. Okay, so that is the text of the hadith. So the uh, another explanation that we would like to give in this regard is those who would insist on sighting the moon by themselves before they uh, they start fasting or before they uh, they go on hiftar. Okay, or the, before they go, to, uh, they go, they go to eat. Okay, so the ruya here, as we have explained, does not have to be cited by everybody and every individual, and that is the purpose of establishing religious authority. So we have religious authorities in every uh, every region, every country at least, every region, every state has their own religious authority. So we wait for the announcement from the religious authority and whatever announcement that is issued officially from this religious authority we have to follow so, okay because once we have put them there so they replace the word the ulul amri that we have to follow and exemplify okay uh, of course there are guidelines for their announcement as well so that is hadith number one under Kitab, uh, Kitab Usuyan. Hadith number two is equally an Malik, okay? Hadathani an Malikin an Abdullahi ibn Dinari an Abdullahi ibn Umara an Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kola ashahru tis'un wa ishruna fala tasumu hatta tarawul hilala wala tuftiru hatta tarawuhu Okay, so this hadith complements the hadith number one. So the first hadith says, La tasumu illa li ru'yatihi. Yani, La tasumu illa li ru'yati shahri Ramadan. Wa la tuftiru illa li ru'yatihi. Okay, La tasumu illa li ru'yati al-hilal. Wa la tuftiru illa li ru'yatihi. So, this hadith complements that by mentioning a statement, a phrase. That phrase is a shahru tis'un wa ishruna. A month is approximately 29 days. A shahru tis'un wa ishruna. A month, a complete month, is approximately 29 days. Fala tasumu hatta tarawul hilala. Do not Fast until you have signed or of, until you have seen or sighted, okay, heard about the the moon. Wala tuftiru hatta tarahu, and you should not break your fasting, celebrate al fitr until you sight it, until you see it, until you heard about it, until you hear the announcement. Okay, but here, as we explained in the first hadith. For in Gumma Aleikum, the prophet says, I shall this on what one is rule. The month is 29 days. But if there is confusion as to the uh, to the sight of the new moon, then fuck the ruler. Then you uh, you complete, you make the completion. Okay, you make the calculation, the complete calculation. 
okay so that is what equivalence to what to 30. now now astrologically the calculation the moon calculation uh, everyone uh, anyone can follow it so no two moons will be 20 uh, will be 30 days okay no 30 days moon will follow each other there will be 30 in the alternate months for a good example it's like this if roger was 30 as it was this year roger was 20 was 30 so Shaban will also not be 30 in practice. In practice, Shaban will not be 30. If the previous month was 30, the current month will not be 30 in calculation. Okay, so this year, Rajab was 30 complete. So, and Shaban was uh, 29. Okay, so if Shaban is 29, so we have Rajab as 30, and we have uh, Shaban as 29, so Ramadan will be expected to be 30. So that is the uh, one practical way of calculating it for those who follow the calculation of the moon, okay, or, or the moon movement. But if on the other way we have Rajab to be 29, okay, if Rajab is 29 or was 29, then Shaban will be 30. So if Shaban is 30, Rajab was 29, Ramadan will be 29 in practice. Okay, so in order to lay down or to lay off all the argument of uh, misunderstanding and misconception in calculation of the moon, so we, this we can follow. And it has been practiced, uh, 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 it, uh, it has been ascertained and confirmed astrologically. Okay, so, but still, nevertheless, since we have the religious authority that we follow at every location and every region, so we let them and we leave the announcement of the beginning and the end of Ramadan to the religious authority. Okay, so that is just the simple explanation that we uh, we can give in there. So those uh, that hadith number two is also found in Hadith Bukhari, Imam uh, Hadith Bukhari and Muslim. Hadith number three in this regard, Hadathani Amalikin and Thawrin ibn Zaydin Adilihi and Abdullahi ibn Abbas anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dhakaru Ramadan faqala la tasumu hatta tarawu al-hilala wa la tuftiru hatta tarawu fa in gumma alaykum fa akmilu al-adada thalafina so this is complementing hadith number one and hadith number two. Okay, in hadith number one, there is no mention of number of days. In hadith number two, there is mention of 29. In hadith number three here, there is mention of 30. Okay, so this is, Islam is a very peaceful and a well-established and organized religion. So um, the issue of one sect uh, disagreeing with others in, uh, with regard to uh, moon calculation should be laid to rest finally, completely. It, uh, it, has, it, it shouldn't be a, an issue. It shouldn't be a, a, an issue that will generate hot argument among Muslims, Omar. Okay, so address number one is general. Number two complements number one. Number three complements two. So by this, in the addition that we have here, in the address number one, we have uh, we have fa in gumma alaykum. We have completely la tasumu illa li ruyatil hilal. Okay. Wa la tuftiru illa li ruyatihi fa in gumma alaykum fa kdiru lahu. So the meaning of fa kdiru lahu, we did not have it in address number one. The meaning of Fakdirulahu, we did not have it in, nar in Narish number two, Hadith number two. In Hadith number three, we have the meaning, interpretation of Fakdirulahu. Fakdirulahu yani, Fa'akmilu al adada. Fa'akmilu al adada. Okay, so in Hadith number two, we have the Prophet saying, Ashahru tis'un wa thalafin wa ishruna yawman. Okay, uh, a month is approximately 29 days. But Fa'ingumma at the end, 
Fa'ak diru. What is the meaning of fa'ak diru? It is what we have in hadith number three here. Fa'ingumma alaykum fa'akmilu al-adada thalathina. So that is the interpretation of fa'ak diru. Lahu. So if you are confused, if you are in confusion, if you are not sure, okay, fa'akmilu al-adada yani al-adda in bracket, so complete the number of calculation to thalathina, to 30. Okay, so that is the, uh, the, uh, that is the further clarification on the number of this that we first and the sighting of the moon. Okay, so that is that also buttresses. So here we have the mention of this on this our this on one is ring 29, and we have the mention of 30. So that can be practically scientifically and philosophically be used for the previous interpretation that we gave before. What was the interpretation? As two astrological months will not be 30 consecutively. Okay? For example, Rajab is 30, Shaban will not be 30, practically. It will be 29, so consequently Ramadan will be 30. Okay, so if Shab, if Rajab was 29, then Raj, uh, Shaban will be 30, Ramadan will be consequently 29. Alright, so uh, we have to uh, check properly. So 29 is what is accurate, okay, but, uh, normally, okay, approximately, approximate calculation is 29, okay, but if anything happens, okay, complete it to 30. So that is the statement of the Prophet. Okay, hadith number four. Hadathani Amalikin Annahu Balagahu Anna Lahilala Ruya Fi Zamani Uthmana Bin Afani Bi Ashiyin Falam Yuftir Uthman Hatta Amsa Waga Bati Shams. Okay, uh, it was reported, okay, it say Annahu Balagahu Anna Lahilala. Ru'a or Ru'ya, okay, uh, he said he received the report that the moon was sighted during the time of Uthman ibn Affan, okay, towards the end of the day, towards the night, okay. Then Uthman did not yuftir, yani, falam yuftir Uthman, okay. Uh, that he, uh, the, he learned the, the moon was sighted okay, earlier in the day and Osman refused to break his fasting until it was in the night of after Maghrib, yani, after the Guru Bishamsi, after the sunset. Okay? So uh, this hadith should not be confused by those who think who take who will take it as a as an evidence to say that they need to see and sight the hilal the moon by themselves before they before they broke the fasting okay the reason why Osman bin Affan refused to stop fasting was it, it, it was already daybreak okay he was fast he, he, he intended the fasting and the announcement was made after the day has been has broke, okay. So uh, the given in his own shoe, just like him, some others and many others will also be fasting on that same day. So it has not been announced in the night before everyone slept. So given the permission to Osman ibn Affan to fast that day, so because it was still. Uh, uh, on the in the calculation of fa'akdiru fa'akdiru yani fa'atimu al adada thalathina so that was the reason there so we should not take that as an exception exception or as uh, as as an evidence to go uh, against the established religious authority okay qala yahya sami'tu malikan yaqulu في الذي يرى خلال رمضان وحده أنه يسوم لا ينبغي له أن يفتره 
wa huwa ya'lamu anna dhalika al-yawma min ramadhana okay uh, yahya reports that he heard malik saying that anyone a single person an individual who sights the moon alone okay he sights the moon he saw the moon alone no one was with him and if he tells people they may not believe in him so what should this person do annahu yasumu la yanbaghi lahu an yuftira that person should should fast he he should not go on iftar so that is on the uh, that is on the let's say we are already in ramadan and uh, on the 29th night so one individual says that he sights the moon alone without informing anybody without no one with him okay and he wants to take that as an evidence that he should on the next day uh, go on iftar on eid okay he is a single person he's an individual okay so it is he is not an authority to say okay, so according to malik he says such person cannot have fitr cannot uh, engage in al fitr alone so as the populace the, the population the general public is fasting he should also engage in fasting la yuftiru he should not break his fasting wa huwa ya'lamu anna dhalika al-yawm min ramadan he should know that that day falls inside ramadan into ramadan okay wa man ra'a hilal shawal wahdahu fa innahu la yuftiru lanna an-nas yattahimun ala an yuftira minhum man laysa ma'munan ويقول ويقول اولئك اذا ظهر عليهم قد راينا الهلال ومن راى هلال شوال نهارا فلا يفطر ويتم صيام يومه ذلك فانما هو هلال الليله التي تاتي okay so this we can use as the interpretation to hadith that says Uthman uh, heard that okay people sighted the moon okay why he was it was already daybreak and he was already in fasting and he refused to break his fasting until after maghrib so this hadith we can actually use to interpret that okay what is that hadith okay it says man raha man raa hilal shawal wahdahu anyone who sees the moon of shawal alone himself alone fa innahu la yuftiru as we explained before he should not he cannot engage in iftar he cannot have uh, fasting okay he can he cannot have uh, eid al-fitr alone okay lanna an-nas yattahimuna ala an yuftira minhum man laysa ma'muna okay because people will suspect him for breaking fasting when everyone is fasting okay because uh people some people could be funny as we can if we can use that word okay uh yatahimuna ala ala an yuftira minhum man laysa ma'muna particularly the people that they do not like or they do not uh trust so when they see or uh, he says something so there might be a kind of doubt they might be doubtful okay on the report so by this such a person cannot break his fasting okay wa yaqulu ulaika idha zahara alayhim okay and those people a group of people idha zahara alayhim qad ra'ayna al-hilala so when they see the moon and a group of people say we see the moon wa man ra'a hilala shawal nahar nahara fala yuftir anyone if the if the moon is sighted during the day after the after subhi after fajr for example it happens sometime so immediately after fajr so the day the moon is still there it has not set yet okay the moon has not set yet okay so if moon is sighted during the day before the midday so that 
we cannot take it as a sign for iftar or futu or idol fetri because it was already during the day. Okay, why you tim musuyama yaomi hida leka? So that this, the fasting of that day has to be completed. Fa in nama huwa hilalu al layla til leti tat. So this hilal, this sighting, this moon is not the moon of the last night. It will be calculated as the moon of the next night, of the night of this day, of today, for example. So the next day will be the Idol of Fitri, not the day that we already started the fasting. Okay, so that is the uh, so this buttresses the case of Sayyiduna Osman ibn Affan, who, uh, when people reported to him that they sighted the moon, but it was, it was already after Fajr, okay, and practically he, has, or he had already uh, intended fasting. Okay, Fadri has gone, so it will be late for people, for him, to circulate the information that it, the moon was sighted. Okay, so that was the reason for completing the fasting of that day and making the iftar in the next world, in the next day. Because according to this next hadith, so the sighting of that moon will be calculated for the night, the following night, not for the previous night. Kala Yahya. سميت مالكا يقول إذا صام الناس okay, إذا صام الناس يوم, يوم الفطر وهم يظنون أنه من رمضان فجاءهم ثبت أن حلال رمضان قد رؤي قبل أن يصوموا بيوم وأن يومهم ذلك أحد وثلاثون فإنهم يفترون في ذلك اليوم Okay, so there is another explanation here. Okay, the explanation that we had above with Sayyiduna Osman ibn Affan was the day was not 30 yet, it was 29. The last night, the last day was 29. Okay, so this in the morning, when the day in the morning when Sayyidina Osman received the information that moon was sighted earlier in the day, okay, so that was supposed to be 30th day. Okay, so then following the fa'ingumma alaykum, when you are confused, okay, then fa'akmilu al adada thalathina. So that was what Sayyidina Osman practiced actually. But another case here is, if it is established that we got the information of the sighting of the moon any time of the day, we are already fasting, okay? Any time of the day, but someone or information came from an higher authority or from religious authority that moon was sighted last night and last night was already 30th of Ramadan so but because we did not see the moon we have not sighted the moon then we just decided to continue in fasting so if we had that information and it is established that that the day in this this day is actually the thirty first day, not the thirtieth day. So it is imperative, according to Malik, that we break our fasting. It is imperative on us to what to break our fasting for Idul Fitri. The only exception is that because it was already midday, so we cannot pray Idul Fitri on that day again. But we should break our fasting on that day. Again, the explanation is that Ramadan was already 30, 30 days yesterday. Okay, but because we did not have any information, okay, and no announcement was made, lack of communication. So we wake up today fasting. We are already at the, at the midday, let's say almost Zohar time. Okay, 
and we have we, we, information came that it is already end of the It was already first of Shawwal. So what we should do is break the fasting immediately, but only that we cannot pray end of the on that day. Okay, because it is established that the day in which we are fasting is the 31st day, not the 30th day. Okay, so that is the explanation there. Okay, for in whom you still fidale kaliyom, they should break the fasting. They should stop fasting for that day. Ayyatasa atinja ahumul habaru. Any time the information, okay, regardless of any time, whether it was in the morning or in the midday or towards Maghrib, any time they find they find the information, they should stop fasting and break the fasting. Gayro anna humla yusoluna salat al eid. So only that they will not pray. So because they received the information after Zawal Shamsi, after the midday. After the midday. So that is the uh, those are the four hadith that we have about the uh, with respect to Ru'ya to Al Hadith. Okay? Four hadith or this uh, there are four hadith, but hadith number four has a series of narration okay, but each of them are portraying each other so basically and generally here so we can sum up this explanation into three points point number one is that okay there should not be uh, we cannot fast and start the fasting of ramadan before ramadan actually starts that is point number one and we have that uh, dalil, we have the evidence directly from the hadith of the Prophet. Okay? La tasumu li ru'yatil hilal. Illa li ru'yatil hilal. Do not fast except you have seen the moon. You have sighted the moon. Okay? That is point number one. And also, in addition to that, we cannot break our fasting. We cannot stop fasting Ramadan until we see the moon. So that is point number one. Point number two is that how do we go about the calculation? The calculation in the Addis number two, the Prophet specifically mentioned as Shahrut is on what is Rina Yaman. So a month is approximately 29 days. Approximately 29 days. Okay, so by this, we fast for 29 days, and if it is established, that the moon is sighted on the night of 29th Ramadan, so the next day approximately uh, and, and automatically becomes the first Shawwal. But we go on with that hadith, if we are confused, if the Hilal, the crescent, the moon was not sighted in the night before we slept, okay, then, and, we, and when we, uh, during the Sahur, for example, we turned, we tuned the television, we checked our WhatsApp, we checked our Telegram, radio, all sorts of media. We tuned them on and we, can, we did not have any, anything establishing that the moon was sighted. Then we are going to fast. So that is the interpretation of فَإِنْغُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَأَكْمِلُوا الْعَدَدَ ثَلَاثِينَ يَوْمًا so if it is if there is confusion, then you complete the number of days, calculate the number of days to complete thirty. So that is point number uh, point number two. Point number three here is uh, if a single person, okay, if we are uh, if we hear the if we are already in the thirtieth day after subhi after fajri. We are already in fasting, and we heard information about the sighting of the moon in previous night or earlier this earlier today. So what should we do? We shouldn't break our fasting. We should complete the fasting until Monday. Then the next day will be what will be our idolatry. What is the reason? The reason was last night was twenty nine. Today will be completion of thirty. So there was confusion already. We complete our fasting to be 30 today. Next day automatically becomes our Eidul Fitri. So in addition to that, if, we, if last night was already 30th of Ramadan, 
and there was no established announcement or authority, authoritative announcement that tomorrow, today, will be a dolifetri. We already woke up fasting. We already woke up fasting. Okay, so regardless of when any time during the day that we receive information that the moon was sighted last night, we automatically, uh, our fasting automatically is rendered invalid because it was already 30th of Ramadan last night. So we fast because we did not receive any information. Now we had information that it was already sighted last night before we slept, but we didn't receive any info the information before we slept. Okay, so we break the fasting automatically because it was uh, it was during the day. The moon has uh, the, the sun has risen already, so we cannot pray in the fitri again on that day. So those are the clear and, uh, and simple explanation that we have in uh, in that uh, regard. Okay, uh, so that is the uh, that is the conclusion of uh, chapter one. Okay. Babul Awal under Kitabu Asiyam. Okay, uh, chapter one under the book of fasting. We move on to chapter two. Chapter two Babu Man Ajma Asiyam Kobla al Fajri. Okay, Babu Man Ajma al Asiyam Kobla al Fajri. So the chapter explaining the one who intended fasting before Ramadan and before the Fajr, before the daybreak, before Fajr. Hadathani Yahya and Malikin and Nafi'in and Abdullahi ibn Umara and Nabukana Yakulu La Yasumu illa man ajma asiyama kobla al Fajr. The meaning of ajma are here. Okay, ajma so that we are not confused with the word. So another word we can replace it with, with man nawa man nawa asriyama kabla al fajri the one who intended fasting before before fajr okay uh, so that is so that we are not confused with ajma al asriyam okay yani the, the, this chapter is about the one who intended fasting before fajr okay so this is uh, uh, actually to be taken that intention has to be made before we fast. So the there are various explanations and clarification to how we make the intention of fasting actually. Okay, so we, we're going to come to that. But before we go into that, we're going to come to the Hadith later, but we, we, we can explain uh, generally before we go in there. So the intention, uh, there are... Uh, no, there are no disagreements among scholars regarding it, but there are different opinions, different opinions and different interpretations as to how intention should be made. Should it be halted, pronounced, or it is enough to be in the, in the, in the heart, in the mind? All right. So, the, and what is the timing for the intention? What is the timing for the intention? Unanimously, the scholars agree that the intention have to make have to be made before Ramadan. Okay, before Ramadan, before the fasting, before we start fasting. Okay, when in the night. Now the calculation in Islamic calculation. When does night? When do we start calculating night? Okay, so uh, conceptually, night Islamically starts. And of course, astrologically also. Start from Maghrib, from Guru Bishams. Okay, immediately Maghrib is, uh, is, is announced, night started already. So from night, from the Azan of Maghrib, until a little while before Fajr, so this is the duration for us to make our intention. Okay? So regard, by this interpretation, regardless of whether we woke up for Sahur or we didn't wake up for Sahur, we have made intention after Maghrib that tomorrow is going to be Ramadan. I'm going to start fasting tomorrow, uh, tomorrow okay, for Ramadan. Okay, so that intention has been there according to some interpretation. 
Okay? So another interpretation is that so the intention has to be altered when we are eating sahur for the first day of Ramadan. And only one time and only from the, for the first day will be generated to the rest of the days of Ramadan. Okay, because it is shahrun, it is one month, so that is the evidence. So starting the intention, because you don't intend to pray zuhur and make intention at every rakah. You make intention at the beginning of zuhur of four rakahs, and that intention is generated throughout the four rakahs. So similarly, when you are fasting Ramadan, so the intention that you make from the beginning of the night, from the first day, gen is generated automatically to the rest of the days of Ramadan. So that is an interpretation, and that is the most acceptable. Okay, so why is it most acceptable is because uh, people do forget. So in, a, in, in an avenue where, whereby you overslept and you did not wake up before the fajr, before, for sahur, and you did not make the intention, what will happen to the fasting of that day? Will it be nullified? No, for that reason. Okay, so that is another interpretation. Another interpretation is that the intention has to be made every night, every other night, every night of Ramadan. Okay, so that is uh, whichever we choose. So the, uh, the, 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 the issue of intention to fast Ramadan should not generate any hot opinion, any hot issue among Muslims. So uh, those who, uh, but unanimously, once from the beginning and inception of Ramadan, so it's enough to generate to the world, to the rest of the days. So, but for the other opinion, it is also acceptable, okay, because you don't generate one intention of, uh, of, sola of making salat of one month, for example, in one day. Okay, so, Allahu A'lam Bissawal. Okay, so, now, back to the, uh, the, the timing of the intention. Okay, so the timing of the night starts from Maghrib, in between Maghrib and Salat al-Fajr. And before the, the starting of Salat al Fajr, so that is the timing for what for making intention. How do we make intention? The form of intention. So do we uh, do we alter it, or it is enough to intend it? Okay. So generally, you go into the Quran. There is there should be no misunderstanding in this. In this. That finishes and ratifies the old uh, the old uh, misconception about generating uh, intention. Okay, at least philosophically, Quranically. Okay, wa asiru kaulakum in surah al-mulk. Awe jaharu bihi inna hu alimun bidhati sudur. So you call her here your intention. Make your intention secretly or you make it loudly. In whatever form you make it, Allah knows what there is in your heart. So it shouldn't generate any hot argument or issue as to you, 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 you choose to, to, to make your intention loudly and I make, you choose to make, then we start fighting over that. No, it shouldn't. So all we need here is a very clear understanding of the interpretation of the Quranic text and the application of the Hadith to it. That is all we need. If we do this, Everything will just go like normal, much of the Just like normal. So the deen is natural. Only we make it in natural. So that is just normal. So that is the uh, explanation that I wish to what I wish to explain before we go into the hadith. Okay? Babu man ajma asiyama kabla al fajri. Okay, if I were to modify this title a little, a little bit, so I will modify it as Babu Jam Usiyam Kabla al Fajri. Okay, Bab Fi Jam Usiyam Kabla al Fajri. So the, the chapter about intention for fasting, making intention for fasting, intending fasting before Fajr. So I would, if I, if I, if I could do that, I would 
modify the type the the the, the chapter title to be that okay but it's equally good babu man ajma asiyam qabl al fajr babu fi jam'i asiyam qabl al fajr it's all the same hadathani yahya an malik an nafi an abdullah ibn umar annahu kana yaqul la yasum illa man ajma asiyam qabl al fajr okay so it is narrated by yahya yahya through malik malik through nafi nafi through abdullah ibn umar he says okay abdullah ibn umar says la yasumu illa man ajma asiyam qabl al fajr no one should fast no one can fast except those who intend fasting before fajr who make the intention of fasting before the day break before the fajr wa hadathani an malik an ibn shihab an aisha wa hafsa zawjay an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mithli da bi mithli dhalika Okay Malik also reported from another source okay from Ibn Shihab Ibn Shihab collected and reported it directly from Sayyidatuna Aisha and Sayyidatuna Hafsa Hafsa the two uh, who are both wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they reported the same hadith that was reported by Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu okay meaning to say So this was the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported by Aisha radiyallahu anha wa Hafsa radiyallahu anha wa Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu Okay so simply put the issue of generating intention niyya is very simple and clearly stated Okay so in this hadith qabla al-fajr before fajr Okay before fajr it means it has to be in the night when does the night start when do we start the calculation of the night after maghrib so in between maghrib and fajr we can make our intention in most location after isha they already start tarawih the night before the ramadan the night before ramadan start they start tarawih that symbolizes intention already the intention that you you left your house to go to the to the masjid to pray tarawih before the next day of ramadan that means that you already had the intention of fasting tomorrow so regardless of whether you wake up for sahur to make the proper intention utterly or secretly so or not intention has been made al amal bin niyat actions are based on the intention okay so that is just a simple explanation that we should clarify on this uh, on this occasion so having said that so we uh, it's going to be almost maghrib here soon so and uh, i still need to drive a uh, little bit dif- distance today before getting home so that is uh, that's going to be that for today okay so for the sources of this of this hadith the hadith of la yasum illa man ajma'a as-siyama qabla al-fajr okay so the sources for it we could find it in abu dawud kitab as-sawm uh babu anniya fi sawm anniya fi sawm so that symbolizes that al jam'u jam'u as-siyam qabla al-fajr yani niya to siyam so that is what we explained earlier okay it could also be found in at-tirmizi okay in uh, volume 6 okay kitabu as-sawm page 33 bab ma ja'a ma uh, la siyama liman la ya'zuma min al-layl al-azm here al-azm here according to tirmizi an-niyya according to abu daud al-jam'u according to the, to the text of al-muwatta okay also reported in an-nasa'i volume 22 kitab as-siyam page 68 bab ikhtilaf an-nakilina li khabar hafsat fi dhalika 
to under the uh, the misunderstanding of misinterpreting the statement of Afsa and that of Aisha radiallahu anha about the word making the issue of making intention for Ramadan. Okay, so that is where we are going to stop today. So basically, al niyyah is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so if we, uh, the, what we used to do in practice, I still remember when we are younger than this, I'm not sure whether we are still young or not. So when we are younger than this, we, uh, with our parents uh, and the sahur is being provi provided and prepared, so before we, before we start the eating, so our parents would ask us to make intention and recite uh, uh, after them, okay, with the with the with the with the statement popularly as uh, Allahumma inni nawaitu siyama Ramadan tis'a wa ishrina aw thalathina yawman Rabbana taqabbal minni minna kama taqabbaltahu min ibadika salihin Bismillahi wa ala barakatillah Then we start eating the sahur and that was for this for that night Okay, for that night, Tiros, we mentioned Tisna wa Ishrina Yaman or Falafina Yaman already Kafa. Okay, so for those who make it every day, it has to be in Siga of, for example, uh, Nawaitu Sauma Ramadan, Sauma Ramadan Garden, okay, Yomu Garden, Fishahri uh, Ramadan, and something of that nature. But that could be what could be uh, stressful. So whichever way we choose, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us right. Inna Allah alamu bisawa. Okay, wa huwa yahdi sabil. Okay, with that, we are going to meet again tomorrow, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to further show our his mercy and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his wife's children, household companions, followers, unto the day, unto the day of judgment. We ask him to reward our ulamas, our Mu'allimin, our Asatida, our uh, Mashayikh, our Murshid, our teachers, professors, we call them lecturers, uh, wherever they are and whoever has impacted anything in any form into us that shapes our personality today. Whether they know it or they, they know it not, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them in multifold, abundantly, okay, dunya wa akhira. We equally ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward our parents, bless them, have mercy on them. Those who have uh, fulfilled their covenant by going beyond to the, to the world and life beyond, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on their soul, show His rahma on them, forgive their sins and trespasses, and pardon all their wrongdoings. Innahu ala dhalika qadir. Wa bil ijabat jadir. Naim al mula wa naim al nasir. And those among our parents who are still alive, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them sound health, good sustenance of halal, and elongate their life and give them the happiness of life through anything that they want. Innahu ala dhalika qadir. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this an act of ibadah that we are doing to make it as a sodako jariah for our parents. Innahu ala dhalika qadir wa bil ijabati jadir naima al-mawla wa naima al-nasir. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us uh, with uh, uh, beneficial knowledge. Okay, profound knowledge, sound knowledge, understanding of our religion. We ask him to guide us right, forgive our trespasses and our mistakes. Innahu ala dhalika qadir wa bil ijabati jadir. Allahumma alimna ma jahilna wa amfa'na bima alamtana wa barik lana fi ilmina bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimina. Bihada naktafi al yawm. حتى نلتقي غدا في حلقة آخر بإذن الله وبالله التوفيق والهداية والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته